Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us for another webcast from the Brain Aneurysm Foundation. Um, tonight's discussion is a very special one. We'll be talking about brain aneurysm, subarachnoid hemorrhage, and what the caregivers need to know in terms of uh, taking care of their loved ones suffering from a brain aneurysm or subarachnoid hemorrhage. We're especially happy to have two of our superb nurses, Erin Palmer and Sandy Bailey, both of whom have participated and conducted our brain aneurysm support group and have extensive experience in helping patients suffering from brain aneurysm and subarachnoid hemorrhage. Erin and Sandy, thank you, and uh, we would appreciate a um, slight presentation by both of whom, after which we'll proceed to answer some questions. Erin, please take it away. All right. Good evening. Um, we're just going to basically kind of go over some of uh, the obstacles that uh, caregivers um, are dealing with uh, when they take um, their loved one home. Um, and then we'll kind of just cover some helpful tips. Uh, tips. But I'm going to start with um, just kind of some um, facts about aneurysms. Uh, ruptured brain aneurysms actually account for 3 to 5 percent of all new strokes. Um, this isn't a typical stroke that most people hear about. Um, this is a stroke that is caused by blood on the brain. Um, but because of that blood, it can actually cause problems in different areas. So people can have problems with walking, talking, swallowing, um, and various other things. So um, some of these uh, ruptured brain aneurysms can leave um, patients dis um, disabled. So we're going to kind of talk about some of the obstacles um, that uh, the caregivers are going through when they take their loved one home. And then I think part of the thing that we see on with family members and caregivers begin, some of the issues begin right when the patient comes to the hospital. I work in our neurocritical care unit, and I think one of the most important things we see and caregivers worry about is that they feel extremely guilty because they didn't catch a problem. They think it's their fault because the patient's aneurysm broke. And I just think it's real important to realize that most aneurysms don't cause any problems, and it's not your fault. Uh, you didn't do anything to cause that aneurysm to break. And I think while the, some of the biggest worry of the family members is when the patient's in the hospital, a lot of time the hardest work is going to begin when that person comes home. Uh, so it's real important to all of this, no matter what we say, you have to keep in mind that you need to take care of yourself and it's okay to take care of yourself. So these are basically the um, six different um, obstacles that we're going to kind of touch on tonight. Um, Sandy will go through the first couple, and then I'll end um, with the last, and then we'll do some questions at the end. I think everybody, whether it's a survivor or a caregiver, uh, goes through a tremendous sense of loss, and they feel a sense of grief. And a lot of times, people feel guilty because they're, maybe their loved one hasn't died, but they still grieve because the, of the change that their loved one has gone through. Um, a lot of patients will say that, um, you know, no matter what your neurosurgeon says, you may see him for a little bit of time, and he'll say, well, you're doing great. But life is often not going to be the same after a subarachnoid hemorrhage. And a lot of times, patients in our support group will indicate, I am so tired of people telling me how good I'm doing when I don't feel that, um, that's the, uh, that I'm doing that good. Um, I think both the patients and the caregivers are worried about whether they're ever going to, the patient's ever going to return to normal. And just because that uh, you're doing well doesn't mean you're not going to be anxious about uh, issues that come up, uh, you know, when you have that headache, what's going to happen, am I having another aneurysm and that. So I think that that's, uh, even though you're doing well, you're gonna, it's perfectly normal to have uh, issues about the changes that you're going through after you've had a brain aneurysm rupture. Uh, you know, there is going to be a loss of freedom for the uh, caregiver and for the patient. Uh, activities may be limited because the patient does have some problems, and there's going to be a loss of freedom sometimes for the caregiver, too, because, uh, you know, they're going to be spending a lot more time taking care of the patient and maybe not have as much time for themselves. Uh, one of the other things that is uh, we see and is a, is a big issue 
uh, is there's a, a tremendous change in the relationship and the relationship adjustments after a patient's had a brain aneurysm. 